And if we are to open our whole being to the healing agencies of heaven, to partake of the redemption from slavery that Christ offers us, we must first ally ourselves to him, live by the rules by which he intend the human mind and body to operate and practice self-discipline. When this discipline and patience, when this discipline operates in the mind, it exercises the will, activates the powers of decision making and calls upon logic and intelligence and the help of God to choose the right day by day. Today when men are succumbing to the slavery of their own feelings, their own animal urges, we cannot emphasize enough the importance of discipline, self-control, adherence to the laws that God provided for man's physical and mental well-being, and the help that Christ has offered to man in his struggle. What shall I do, or what shall we do, and dare for, for Jesus? He gave his life to save us. It was David who said in Psalms 116, verses 12 to 14, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? He said, I will take up the cup of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the presence of his people. Now, there, there was a long time ago in the days of slavery in the United States. There was this man named Jack, and Jack was a slave. But the thing about Jack, Jack was a very stubborn slave. He would not work. And so his master wanted to get rid of him. And eventually his master put him on the auction to be sold. And Jack was at auction, and many people were passing by, you know, buying slaves. Many slaves were bought, but Jack was left all alone. Nobody wanted to buy him because they knew that Jack would not work. He was too stubborn. But up came one man, in a wagon and he looked at Jack and he saw that Jack was a good, tall, strapping young man. And he told the auctioneer, I'm going to buy him. The man said, I wouldn't bet on that. He won't work. The man said, I will still take him. Anyway, Jack was bought and, you know, he went along with the man. And they rode along. Jack was grumbling all the time. You bought me, but I'm not going to work. The man kept silent. Then eventually, they reached, you know, the destination. Close to a big house, the man said, this is my house. This is where I live. And they came up the wagon. And he brought Jack behind the house. And there was a little cottage, and he told Jack, this is where you're going to live. Jack said, even if you give me a house, I still want to work. And then the man said, Jack, I didn't buy you to make you work. I bought you to free you. Jack couldn't believe it. He was so overwhelmed. He said, you bought me to free me? And the tears came rolling down his face. And he has claimed, I will work for you and serve you all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. And so, brethren, that is what Christ has done for us. We were slaves to sin. We couldn't free ourselves. But Christ came and he died and he paid that price. And so what are we to do for him? because of his great sacrifice. All we have to do is to let him have his way in our life. Let him take control. And so my appeal to you is, I implore you today, 
where we have failed, let us improve and allow the Lord to work with us. He desires the best in us. God has freed us from sin's penalty and the great taskmaster who has held us captive and has given us new hope. All we can say is, Lord, use me and make me a vessel fit for thy kingdom. Amen. Amen. Amen.